Gamification is such an alluring concept. It holds the promise of getting game-like engagement without actually building a game. But watch out, there are five common startup myths that can trip up even brilliant founders. Hi, I'm Amy Jo Kim. Today, I'm going to show you what happens when someone falls for those myths and what to do instead. And be sure to stay to the end to learn a proven motivational system that'll help you build incentive systems that work. So every day I work with teams all around the world who struggle with demanding deadlines and a constant pressure to ship. And you know what? I get it. Shipping fast and learning from the market is often the right thing to do. But here's the thing. Incentive systems are tricky. And if you get them wrong, it's hard to unwind the damage. When we gamify something without understanding the motivations and struggling moments of our customers, those incentive systems can backfire, often spectacularly. That's why it's so important that you know about these gamification myths so you can spot them, navigate around them, and know what to do instead. So come on, let's get smarter together. Throughout history, competitive games like polo, chess, and risk have engaged us and delivered big-time fun. You can identify these as zero-sum games because there are winners and losers who are competing for a scarce resource. And gamification techniques like leaderboards and contests and rank competitions are also zero-sum mechanics. In terms of engineering, these kind of zero-sum mechanics are relatively easy to build and deploy. That's part of why they're so popular and widespread. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. For a lot of people, zero-sum gaming isn't that compelling. There's another style of gameplay where people band together to accomplish something that they couldn't on their own. These cooperative, positive-sum games deliver a winning-together emotional experience in contrast to the I win, you lose, competitive, and status ranking that you'll see in zero-sum games. So if you want to look beyond leaderboards, study games like Left 4 Dead, Portal 2, Covet Fashion, Minecraft, and even TikTok duets and stitches. That's where you'll find inspiration for creating your own cooperative gameplay. Let's see, if I sprinkle some points and badges onto my app, engagement will magically happen, right? Isn't that how it works? Once upon a time, I embraced this approach and I learned a painful lesson. While points and badges can juice your initial stats, they won't help you drive long-term retention. Because without a meaningful customer journey, you're just going to end up with clutter and confusion. Take my client Replica, for example. A few months after launch, their smart chatbot had millions of downloads, but low engagement. They tried adding points and badges, and that gave them a promising short-term lift. But their 30-day retention didn't measurably improve, and they still didn't really know who the app was serving. So we worked together to identify a high-need subset of customers, which turned out to be people struggling with anxiety and mental health issues who love the convenient, friendly chatbot format. Once we focused on serving that niche and building an experience that could help them thrive, everything else fell into place. Though it was painful, that failed gamification experiment taught us that defaulting to points, badges, and leaderboards isn't always the right approach. It can fool you into thinking you're succeeding while actually screwing up your audience targeting and long-term engagement. So what did the Replica team do to turn things around? Well, they learned about their customers and then developed a meaningful mini-mission system and media-rich avatar system which gave people something fun to do while encouraging good mental health practices. And as a result, Replica was able to target their marketing, improve their retention and app store rankings, and introduce new monetization opportunities. The best designers know that visible mechanics aren't where the magic is. The magic happens underneath the surface where you can't see it, in the systems that chug along, helping your customers make progress. Do you ever kick off projects by sketching out your ideas? Well, me too. A lot of us visual thinkers do that. 
Back on Happify, for example, we drew sketches of a 2D isometric world that looked kind of like a theme park. And those sketches helped us communicate our vision and raise some initial capital. Coming from the gaming industry, we thought, hey, that looks like a great way to engage people. So we went ahead and developed our initial UX. But then we tested it on our early customers and they hated it. They told us they wanted something that felt more lightweight, more like Pinterest and less like a game. That message was so hard to hear, but we sucked it up and we made the changes and Happify is now a major hit that also offers a digital therapeutic that's covered by insurance. And you know what? We never would have found that success if we'd stuck with our original idea that it had to look like a game. This one might be the most persistent and damaging myth of all. Do external rewards unlock engagement? Oh, how I wish this was true, because my life as a designer would be so much easier. But sadly, it's not. Now, external rewards can do a lot. They can narrow your customer's focus, they can keep people on task, and they can help you attract new customers. But watch out, because you might inadvertently kill your retention. In his seminal book, Drive, Dan Pink tells the story of a motivational study conducted in a classroom of first graders. Now, some of the kids already loved to read in their free time, and some didn't. For a month, everyone was rewarded for the number of pages that they read. Afterwards, the rewards stopped. What do you think happened? The kids who used to read for pleasure stopped. Training them to read for rewards had actually extinguished their internal motivation. So at this point, you might be wondering, well, if I can't count on external rewards to drive engagement, what can I count on? Here's a hot tip. Think about how you can harness autonomy, mastery, and purpose, the trinity of intrinsic motivation. Now, this comes from self-determination theory, or SDT, which is a well-established psychological theory of what motivates humans. SDT identifies three core drivers of human motivation. Autonomy, our desire to be self-directed and take our destiny into our own hands. Mastery, our desire to improve ourselves and make progress on our situation and our own skills. And purpose or relatedness, our desire to find meaning and connection through being part of something larger than ourselves. For long-term retention, turns out that meaningful progress and social connection are far stickier than any badge or financial bribe. So take a dive into SDT and start thinking about how to apply it to your work. I hope you enjoyed learning about the gamification myths that can hold you back and keep you from finding success. If you want some actionable tips about how to do gamification right, check out the next video, which is right here. And if you want to learn more about self-determination theory, tell me about it in the comments. I'd love to do a deep dive if you're interested. That's all for today. See you next week.